Whenever my sister and I visit an ice cream parlor, she tastes all different flavors before deciding which one to buy, considering the factors such as sweetness, creaminess and price. However, I know exactly which flavor I take. You know, chocolate is always the best kind. That is the difference between cost-based optimization and heuristic optimization. Hello learners, welcome back to Constant Learners. In today's video, we are discussing heuristic query optimization. Let's begin. Heuristic query optimization in DBMS is a rule-based approach to optimizing queries. Instead of trying all possible query plans, like in cost-based optimization, the system follows a set of predefined rules known as heuristics that are generally known to improve performance. These rules are applied to the relational algebra operations to transform the query into an equivalent but more efficient form. It relies on empirical knowledge and common best practices to transform a query into a more efficient form without necessarily calculating the exact cost. Let's discuss what's empirical knowledge and common best practices. Empirical knowledge means the knowledge gained from experience. You know like the experience that eating spicy food at night gives you? Acidity. So you avoid it. In DBMS, the system knows from experience that applying filters, that is selections early, usually makes queries faster. Right. That's empirical knowledge. Now, in case of common best practices, these are the rules of thumb followed by almost everyone because they usually work so well. Example, everyone knows it's best to study in a quiet place instead of a noisy one for better focus. In DBMS, a best practice is to perform a projection early to remove unwanted columns, reducing the size of the data to process. Let's discuss these common techniques in heuristic optimization in detail. First is push selections and projections down the query tree, that is on the base relation. Now a base relation is a table stored in the database. The original relation that comes straight from storage, not something that has been created as an intermediate result during a query. This is something that is directly stored in the database that was created maybe while creating the database or afterwards but it was intentionally created with the purpose of storing the data right so when we say push selections and projections down closer to base relations it means apply filters and pick only required columns directly on the original tables before generating big intermediate results how can we do that by performing selection early, that is apply sigma as soon as possible. The selection operation selects the number of rows. Thus, it significantly reduces the number of rows that we need to check, thereby reducing the size of intermediate results. Right. So, when we reduce the size of intermediate results by applying selection conditions first, we don't have to scan the entire table to get the final outcome. Example, instead of joining two big tables and then filtering, we can filter first and then join the intermediate results. Next is by performing projection early, that is apply pi as soon as possible. The projection operation gives us the required columns. Thus, it significantly reduces the number of columns that we need to filter, thereby reducing the table's size. So, we can remove unnecessary attributes early to reduce the size of intermediate results. Right? 
Next common technique in heuristic optimization is to combine Cartesian product with selection into join. Now, in relational algebra, a join is usually formed by combining Cartesian product and selection on join condition. So, if a query contains a Cartesian product followed by a selection, rewrite it directly as a join. Right? Next is to replace nested subqueries with joins whenever possible. Nested subqueries run step by step and can be slow. However, joins combine tables in one go, making the query simpler and usually faster. So whenever possible, we replace the subqueries with join to flatten the queries to make them simpler and faster. Next one is to reorder joints for efficiency. Join smaller relations first or use selective joints early to reduce intermediate results. Next is to use common sub-expression elimination. If the same expression is used multiple times, compute it once and reuse it. If a query repeats the same calculation or subquery in multiple places, the DBMS should compute it once, save it and reuse it rather than recomputing every time. For example, if two friends both ask you the price of an ice cream, you check once and then tell both rather than going back to the shop twice. Suppose we have a query Let's say select name from employee department where employee dot department ID is equal to department dot department ID and department dot location is Delhi. So in this case, we have to select names of the employees from the employee department whose department is located in Delhi. So this location, the department ID and location details we are going to get from the department table. Right. So if we solve this without the heuristic, we first compute Cartesian product of employee with the department table. Then we apply selection for location is equal to Delhi and then apply the join condition and finally project the name column. However, this is going to be creating an extremely huge intermediate table when we find the Cartesian product of employee table with the department table. Now, if we solve it with the heuristic, we first select the department with location is equal to Delhi from the department table. Right, And then we join this employee table with this smaller set of department table where we have selected the location is equal to Delhi. And finally, we project the name column. This avoids creating a huge intermediate Cartesian product. All right. Heuristic methods are generally simpler and faster to implement compared to cost based optimization, which involves calculating the cost of various execution plans. This makes them suitable for scenarios where quick optimization is crucial or when cost based optimization is computationally expensive. So that was all for this video. I'll see you in the next one discussing relational calculus with domain and tuple calculus. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and thank you so much for watching.